After all, programming is mostly about taking data in from users and giving them data out after doing some processing. So being able to show users some data is an essential part of coding. Let's begin by defining a variable. I'll say age equal 30. This is how you define a variable in Python and give it a value. You first state the variable name, then an equal sign, and then the value that you want to give it. If you want to print an age, all you have to do is say print, and then inside brackets, the thing that you want to print out. So here we've created the variable age and given it the value 30, and then we are going to print it out and show it to the user. All Python programs start off by running on a text console, something like what you see here on the right. What that means is that for the foreseeable future, all our Python programs are going to be dealing in text. They're going to receive text from the user and they're going to show the user text. If we run this program, you'll see that 30 gets printed out because that is what our program does. I will be keeping this code for you to see. So if I'm deleting things and moving things around, don't worry about it. You'll be able to see the complete code in the resources section just linked so you can go and have a look. Instead of printing age, you can print 30 directly and that's totally fine. It means exactly the same thing. Because age was a name for the value 30, you can just use the value 30 directly. And this will always be the case. Instead of a variable, you can always use the value that that variable refers to. However, there is a key benefit of having variables, which is that if you define an age variable to be 30 and then you print it out, then you can change the value and print it out. And now you only have one variable or one name, but initially it was a name for the value 30. And then in line four, we changed it so that the name age is now a name for the value 40. So if we run this, you'll see that 30 gets printed out first, as we do in line two, and then 40 gets printed out after. So this is just how variables work. You give them the name, then an equal sign, and then the value. If you want a longer variable name, for example, something like friend age, usually in Python, you will use the underscore character to separate different words. In other programming languages, you may do something like friend age like this, but Python developers don't like that. We use friend underscore age. And variable names can contain underscores and they can also contain numbers if you'd like. But they can't contain anything else. So you can't put dashes in them or any special symbols. In addition, variable names cannot start with a number. Here's another example of a variable that uses this type of separation between words. In programming, this type of separation is called snake case. So maybe something to remember in case you want to search for it in Google later on. If you have a variable name that you are arguably never going to change, then we usually write those all in uppercase letters. So for example, the number pi, which is 314159, you would write that all in uppercase because you're never going to want to change it. This is just a convention. And what it tells you when you're reading this program is that this is a constant. So it's never going to change. You can still change it though, but it is just not recommended. Another example would be something like this. When you do radians to degrees, this defines a new variable and the value is 180 divided by pi. So this is how you create variables and give them values. Now we're going to be looking at numbers in a bit more detail so that we learn more about how mathematics works in Python. In Python, You've got two main types of numbers and that is integers or whole numbers and floating point numbers or numbers with a decimal place. For example, if we do age equal 35, this is an integer. And if we do pi equal 3.14159, this is a float. Notice that the variable name itself is largely irrelevant in this explanation. What matters is the value. Here we've got a whole number, a number that doesn't have a decimal place. And here we've got a number with a decimal place. So this is a float. Anywhere in Python, you can also use the hash symbol to write a comment. So here we have something called a integer and here we have a float. And what happens is when Python goes through this code, it ignores everything that comes after the hash symbol. So you can use it to write comments for yourself, to remind yourself of what things are or as notes for studying later on.
mathematics works just as normal. So we can have a variable called maths operation and make it equal to one plus three times four divided by two minus two, making use of all the major mathematical symbols. And just as in normal maths, the uh, PEMDAS or BODMAS rules are followed. So multiplication is evaluated first, then division, then addition, and then subtraction. So here we would have 12 divided by two is six, one plus six is seven, minus two is five. And you can verify that by printing it out. So I'm going to press run now and we'll see 5.0 gets printed out there. This is an important part of mathematics in Python because whenever you do division, you always get a float. Even if the result is essentially something 0, .0 which is basically a whole number, you always get back a float. So if we do something like float division and we say 12 divided by 3, then we print it out. And I'm just going to delete this code here for simplicity. So if we do something like this, you'll see that we get 4.0 back. If you want to get rid of the floating point or the decimal place, you can do integer division. So here I'm going to create a new variable called integer division. You can call it whatever you want, though. Remember, these are just names. And I'm going to do 12 divide divide 3. And what this does is it performs a division and then removes everything after the decimal place. So this can come in handy at times. So if we run that, you'll see that you get 4.0 first from this first print statement, and then just 4 for the second one. Notice that if we change this to 8 divided by 3, the floating point division is 2.6, but the integer division is 2. This here does not round the numbers up and down. It just removes everything after the decimal place. So this is something to keep in mind as you do integer division later on. That's everything for this video. Thank you for joining me. 